Hey guys, you here, right? Hey, G, you know, welcome to another Project Cars gameplay commentary. I wanted to discuss about a few things that I personally think about this game and sort of add on to my previous video. So on the screen, what you just saw there, somehow I managed to hold the world record. World record for the Sekito National Track with a prototype car, I think P90, P <laughs> LM30, LM, uh, I don't know what. What's it? P30 LMP1. The fuck these car names, man. Basically, it's a prototype car, GT, whatever. I don't, I don't even know. I don't give a shit. But uh, here's the thing, right? Uh, when it comes to this game, you you put a track down, you set your mind to it, and you say, you know what? All right, I'm gonna spend hours and hours until you get it right because th that's personally what my mindset I have. When I first did this track, you know, I couldn't break the one minute marker within the out first hour of trying it. I was like, wow, I'm completely shit. Like. And next thing you know, Mac in 10, who's the ghost I'm currently using for the time trial. By the way, the ghost system in this game is fantastic. It's perfectly done. When you get close to the ghost, it fades away. When you're further away from it, it becomes more uh, clear. And so, anyway, yeah, I was doing this track. I was getting demotivated. Mac in 10 was able to get a 58 second in about a few laps. I was like, fucking hell. Now, I'm quite confident that uh, the 57 record that I'm holding right now, after this video goes up, people are going to be like, yo, this guy is shit, I can do better than this. They're going to hop onto this track and beat my time. And that's uh, that's what I'm expecting right now as we speak. So, uh, go ahead, lads. Smash it. I want to see it. So, anyway, here's the thing about Project Cars and why I'm posting this video. It's because, of course, in Project Cars, you gi you're given a set of tracks and they don't change. Like, you're just there and you all you have to do is just practice. And the biggest issue that I have had recently of playing this game, and I constantly hear complaints about people in group chats and Skype and stuff, is the multiplayer sessions. The problem is that a lot of the newcomers onto this game just immediately want to hop into a multiplayer session and just want to race with other people. I can understand people want to get involved and stuff, but the issue is with this simulator, it doesn't work like that. You can't just jump in and expect to do well. You have to put in hours and practice into a track and really understand the car and the track itself with the breaking points and the line taking and the next step is after you nail the track like i have managed to do is to actually work on racecraft on this game because it's a complete new concept based on actual real life so as you saw there from this little footage you know i transferred my, myself from hot lap into this although i nailed a 58 second consistent lap which actually did end up help me catching up to person ahead However, when it comes to overtaking, it's completely different because you have to be extremely patient and you can't just go into an opportunity and rush the opportunity right off the bat just because you see an overtaking chance. And the thing about this, well, not game, but a simulator is that, you know, on multiplayer sessions, when a takeout does occur, when someone else takes you out, it's very difficult for the person to tell whether or not they took you out. At the same time, the person that gets taken out feels it the most. And it's like almost you have that mentality where you expect the person that takes you out to wait. But on this simulator, at the beginning of 99% of the races, you always see a lot of crashes. But that's expected because everyone's new to the game, right? And eventually people will get used to it. But it's still very difficult to tell if you've taken someone out or not. Because a lot of people play in cockpit cam. Like this is the front hood cam. But in cockpit, a lot of people prefer that. And the reason why a lot of people prefer that is because the general pace of the game gets slowed down quite drastically. You can tell a huge difference between every other camera and the cockpit view, right? The cockpit view on the inside and you're holding the wheel, everything around you feels extremely slow. So you've got more time to think about situations and your breaking point. I don't know why it's like that. It's so weird. But that's one thing I noticed. I personally now also play in cockpit view after this gameplay footage anyway. I managed to change the settings around. I've, I've changed my field of view to 100 as well for each of the angles and uh, sorry camera angles so yeah cockpit view is certainly the way to go about it although you've got side mirrors to see where the players are around you and you've got the mirror to look back you know all of this is still difficult to tell whether or not you've taken someone out and of course on this simulator if you get taken out you know it's extremely difficult to recover you know you can get bounced off even if you grab a little bit of dirt completely slows down your car or you, or you can just go spinning off understeering. Sometimes you get the understeering motion because someone nudges you on the side. That can get extremely frustrating as well. Worst part is obviously the person that takes you out keeps going, but then they themselves don't realize it. And then you you feel like shit basically after the race because the worst part is you know when, you, when you've got a qualifying session, someone starts in pole position and uh, a lot of takeouts do occur. 
This game doesn't penalize the people that take you out. That's the worst thing. Like you start, you start off the race, you start in a pole position, you go to the first corner, bang, you're knocked out. Nothing happens. There's no like safety car or anything like that. There's no penalizing people, you know, for five seconds. Like you go off the track usually. And there's a lot of tracks on this game that you're allowed to go off these runoff areas or track extending without getting penalized as well, which counts towards your lap time. So, you know, it's not me, it's LM in the eyes. It may, it may seem like I'm actually uh, talking a lot of shit about this simulator, but it's, it's always nice to bring out the negatives as well as the positive. You can't always be positive about something. There's always going to be certain downsides to any anything any new game comes out whatever like of course i'm, I'm quite confident that uh, the devs who actually are supposedly listen to the feedback of the community would uh, respond in a few months time or with new patches and updates so i'm not i'm not really fussed about that and i mean that like, the game is great you know personal experience so far i felt like you know right before i talk about that before i talk about my feelings right you know that's quite emotional uh, this gameplay footage you, you what you're watching now i personally wanted to challenge myself going against this person in the lobby as Yaya of course and uh, of course I wanted to practice my overtaking and properly overtaking without actually uh, overtaking someone when they make an error you know I, I wanted to actually go for a move and that's why I was sort of backing off every time I made a pass when he made an error so it's going back and forth eventually I was able to do that at the end of this footage but like I said it requires a lot of practice my advice is if you're new to this game Get a friend, just one or two, you know, just practice on the same track with the same car, understand it. And then when you're confident, you move on to the next one so that you get everything down in muscle memory, you know. Uh, so, manual transmission is a whole other story. I comes down to experience. Someone told me, yeah, this is a quote, you know, to do well in this game, you got to play smart. It's not all about pushing hard, you know. In GTA 5, yeah, you may get rewarded for pushing hard. But on games like this, where it's a simulator, you have to play it smart. Not push it hard with your brain, but actually think about it in a realistic form in a logical way. So anyway, here's the thing, all right? My feelings when it comes to using the controller or the D-pad or whatever, yeah? The P I, use, I use the PS4 controller right now. That's what I use for getting these times and this footage right now for our, all the footage that you're seeing in this video. Honestly, it's extremely frustrating using the controller. I would not recommend it. A lot of people say, yeah, it's fine. You can use a controller, man. It's... It's all right, you can do just as well. Look at all these record times, people were using controller, man. But that that's honestly not the case because here's the thing, right? Let me tell you something, right? First of all, I, I near enough got a carpal tunnel from playing GTA 5. My hands always hurt when I'm using the controller, especially when playing on a simulator. The driving style is completely different between the two games. When you're steering on Project Cars, you have to properly steer. When you take a corner, you can't flick the left stick. That's the completely wrong technique to use there's a technique where on gta 5 you master which is the cadence technique cadence steering is basically flicking the left left stick you know if you master that you're going to do extremely well on gta 5 on project cars complete opposite you have to be smooth with the cornering you have to hold a particular cornering with the stick in one motion without actually flicking it that switching between those two can get extremely mindfuckery you know it can really piss man off you know i'm sitting there and Trying to get used to that and the coordination, the timing, and whilst manual shifting with L1, R1. Are you kidding me? That cramps up my fingers so much that you know what? I've ordered a wheel, I've ordered a Thrustmaster T300 RS, which will be coming. I'm going to be doing cam videos on that. You guys are going to enjoy me failing whilst driving with the wheel live. I might do some live rage commentary because I will be raging. I tell you that. I ain't going to lie to you. I'll be straight up honest, man. So, yeah, I'll be getting a wheel. I definitely would recommend a wheel for this game or the simulator. Sorry. Uh, personally, from my experience, D-pads will not work, especially when you're thinking of doing endurance races. You, honestly, your hands will just fall off. I'm telling you. So, uh, anyway, that's just from my experience. Hopefully, you guys enjoyed I do like this game, but at the same time, there's a few things I wanted to point out that are negatives of it. It's always nice to point out negatives and the positives. Overall, I'll be still playing this game between this and Project Car, sorry, GTA 5. So yeah, let me know what you guys think of your experience so far. And uh, yeah, I'll see you guys soon. I'll be reading the comments as always. Shall you soon now? Good night, peace. Yeah! Hey guys, shall you hear right here, Gene? Welcome to my first Project Cars gameplay commentary on my channel. This is going to be my first impressions of the game from the first few hours that I've played it so far. How I feel about it, what I think of it, 